Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, thanks for subscribing and liking. I'm just going to run through how to install and set up and configure, or at least initially, FreeBSD on a computer for you. Um, now I'm, I'm doing this on a, a virtual machine, but that's fine. So here's the, the, the installer. I'm going to assume that you've already set up your USB. It's quite easy to do that. You can just use Rufus or whatever tool, DD on, on a Unix or Linux Lite box. Um, so quickly running through. Here it is. It's booted from the USB stick. Here's the install. And we'll just quickly install it. So choose the install. You can go to the shell or a live CD, but it's not a live CD in a traditional sense. It's more um, of a rescue CD more than a live CD. So we'll, we'll click install. We'll choose our keyboard map. Now I'm in the UK, so I'll just use this one. Won't bother testing it because I know it works. They generally do. And this is just what we want to call it. This is the host name. Here's the options. We don't need the debug. We will, however, have the ports and the source. I like to put these in because I like um, compiling software and the OS from the source. Um, it just allows me to go through it and have a look at what I'm actually doing and what I'm actually using. You don't have to do it that way. You can use other stuff, um, namely the ports, uh, namely the package system, PKG. Uh, we'll choose the auto ZFS on this one, the guided route on ZFS, but you can use the UFS um, or you can manually do it yourself. I think for, for most people, the, the auto will be pretty spot on for you. Um, so if we click that one, it will probe the device. Now, as you can see, there's the pool name. Um, I'll go through what some of these mean in a later video, but essentially this will create a data set on your ZFS um, file system. And again, I'm not going to get into that, but yeah. So we'll just change this to UEFI. And we don't really need to change the swap. We could do if we wanted to, but we don't need to on this one. Um, and then if we had multiple disks, we could change the arrangement, the, the pool type. So there's a stripe, which is basically the data is just literally chucked across all the disks striped. Um, there is also a mirror, so you can have two disks with exactly the same stuff on them. And if one goes, you've got that redundancy. Um, and again, RAID 10, which is a two-way mirror, or a single redundant RAID. So if you have one disk that fails, and so on. So we'll, we'll go with the stripe for now. And we'll proceed with the install. There we go. So it's just fetching the distribution from the, the, the USB stick very quickly, which is what we like to just like to see. Now, obviously, th this may depend on your hardware. Um, but generally speaking, this is usually very, very quick. So it's just unzipping or extracting the, the base the base OS, it will then do the kernel, which is not very big, the lib32 stuff, and then the ports. So this is all the software, the 45,000 packages or whatever it is that um, FreeBSD offers. And then the source for the base and the kernel. This is where you can recompile your kernel and your operating system and in the kernel you can add devices or take them out and make it a streamlined install however you want to do it very very customizable select your, your password for root and like i said this is a virtual machine um, so there's my hyper v network interface we'll allow it to do this on IPv4 and we will select DHCP. You can set a static if you want, a static IP address. 
you know what you're doing. Um, but nine times out of ten, a DHCP is is just fine for a desktop. For a server, you'd probably definitely want to set a static IP address. We don't want to use IPv6 for the moment. My ISP doesn't provide IPv6 anyway. And here you'll see the resolver, the DNS resolver uh, configuration. So it will search for the domain name and it will use the, the two DNS servers. So that's um, one dot one dot and then Google for the second one. Select your location. I'm in Europe, the UK. And that does look reasonable to me. Um, it is February the 1st. And that is the correct time. Here we can check a few services that start on boot uh, when you turn it on. Uh, I like to have the SSHD, Secure Shell Daemon. And I like to have NTP date and NTPD so that it gets time automatically. Unless you're using a laptop, it's really no point in using the adjust CPU frequency dynamically. It's a power thing. Um, doesn't matter on a desktop. And I'm not going to worry about kernel crash dumps. It just takes up space and I don't debug them anyway because I've taken all the debugging stuff out. You can do a lot of this. I'm just going to disable send mail um, and not worry about anything else. And then I'll add my username. For the logging group, you can use staff or wheel. Um, either of these groups will allow you to SU or become the super user. And I like the CSH shell, which always used to be the default shell for FreeBSD. I think it still is for root. Home directory permissions will leave as default. We'll use a, a password based authentication, not an empty one. We won't create a random one. So let's choose our password. We don't want to lock it out after. And that all looks reasonable to me. We don't want to add another one. So there we go. Um, that's all of the configuration. We'll apply that. And it's finished. Would we like to do anything else before restarting? Basically is what it's asking me. And I don't want to. I could do. I could drop down to the shell and, and make some other changes. But at this point, there, it's not necessary. Um, we will need to take our USB stick out while it's rebooting. So it doesn't just boot from that again. Um, so I'll let you know when to do that. can do that now. That's the USB stick removed. And here we go. This will be booting up our new install of FreeBSD. It's getting its IP address. Setting up the date. And there we go, ready to log in. And I can log in as Gary H. There we go. That is how you install FreeBSD. I hope you found this useful. Um, please keep coming back for content. I'm trying to do two to three videos a week. Um, give it a thumbs up and a like, share it and subscribe and I'll see you in the next one. Take care.